Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ella, a second year medical student. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to best prepare yourself for medical school applications. If you'd like a bit of an insight into how medical school is, or tips for A-level biology, chemistry, math, or UCAT tips, then make sure to check out my channel. Now, in terms of the video, I'm going to be splitting it into three main sections. First one is going to be personal statement, so how to best prepare yourself and do activities that will enhance your personal statement. Second one is going to be the UCAT, so how to best prepare yourself for the UCAT exam. And the third one is going to be A-levels in general. Now, this video is sponsored by Medify, which I use to prepare for my UCAT exam, and I'll be talking about them later on in the UCAT section. Now, without any further ado, let's get started. So in terms of personal statement, year 12 and year 11 are the best time to tailor your activities so that you enhance and prepare your personal statement so that it can be accepted by medical schools. And there are a few things that I would recommend doing in those two years or in year 12 in general that I think will be amazing and will really give you those extra points that will make your personal statement stand out. So I have six main tips or points slash action points that I think you should focus on during year 12. So first one that I'd recommend is watching webinars, online webinars or lectures about medical Medicine. So these could be from the Royal Society of Medicine, they could be from BMJ, or they could be from other medical related websites or societies. And these will be really helpful in, you know, just putting it in your personal statement and having a bit of extra knowledge about medicine in general when you're preparing for interviews. So what I'd recommend is watching, for example, a webinar that seems a bit interesting. Um, I remember in year 12 I watched one about global warming and impact on skin cancer and just skin diseases in general. And what I'd recommend is just having a notepad at the side, just write the time of the webinar and then kind of write a summary or just small points about the main things talked about in the webinar and this will just make sure that you can refresh your memory later on before interviews and talk about this webinar if needed so if there's something interesting if there's a specialty that you're quite interested in or a certain topic in medicine or in science in general that you're interested in then I'd recommend looking for a webinar on that second thing I'd also recommend doing is to do a free course on something that is medicine related so what I did in year 12, I did a free learning course on airway management and how to best approach airway management and airway emergencies. And although obviously in year 12 I didn't understand everything, I tried to take some notes and just understand a basic gist of what the course was talking about. And I did put that in my personal statement and actually in one of my interviews I ended up being interviewed by this anaesthetist and we ended up having this conversation about area management and he asked me about the course and just main keywords that I learned from the course and then we had a conversation about area management and I think it's an amazing way to really just up your interview and up your personal statement. So that's something that I definitely recommend you doing. There are as just the same thing with their webinars, there's so many free learning free courses that are out there on the internet. I personally use free learning website um, but I'm sure there are also many other websites that you can use and even just like playlist courses on YouTube etc. These are things that could be really beneficial so I'd recommend that. And it's an amazing way to just show a sign of your dedication and interest in medicine that you actually took time aside to your focus and complete the course or watch webinar etc. Third thing I'd really recommend and this is kind of based on what your school provides but if your school does EPQ I'd really recommend that you do an EPQ. Research is such a huge thing in medicine and if interviewers can see that you are interested in research and you're open to exploring research then that's something that is really a plus point for you. My school didn't offer EPQs but they did offer a chance to do a research paper towards the end of year 12 so if you're in a similar situation where your school doesn't offer EPQs then I'd recommend doing a research paper on something that you're interested in in your own time and then you can mention it in your personal statement it really gives you plus points if you also mention it in the interview and just say that I'm really interested in research that's something that I did in my interviews as well and just putting it in your personal statement will give you will enhance your personal statement and will show you that you're more well-rounded and ready for medicine especially since research is such a big part of medicine the fourth main thing that I would recommend you do is to always stay up to date with medical advancements or any technological advancements relating to medicine just basically any healthcare related news and you can do this really easily by just downloading the BBC app and turning on notifications and just focusing on healthcare related news or you could also use the BMJ things like that are a really good way to keep up to date. Also YouTube videos are also really helpful. There's always these kind of summary YouTube videos preparing you for interviews where they just give you an overview of all the new things that happened in medicine in the last year basically. Now fifth thing I'd really recommend and this is to be honest up to availability and 
basically if you're able to find this or not but it's so important for you to have a shadowing placement now because my year was really close to covid uh, most hospitals were not allowing shadowing placements at all so i didn't end up getting a shadowing placement but basically any experience in anything that's healthcare related is so important so if you can manage to find a work placement or a shadowing placement at a hospital then that's amazing and some of the ways that you can do this is basically just email consultants in hospitals and tell them oh i'd like to have a one week placement with you or a few days placement if possible you could also reach out through your school and see if your school has any contacts that they can provide but if you can't manage to do a work or shadowing placement at a hospital then other things that you can do would also be for example St. John ambulance cadets which i did and it's really healthcare related and can give you an insight into emergency situations and the job of first aiders and anything else that's healthcare related any part-time jobs as well are really helpful so there are a lot of transferable skills from part-time jobs things like teamwork communication working in a fast-paced environment and dealing with a high stress environment all of these things are applicable to medicine as well so having this form of work experience is really important to mention in your personal statement now the final thing to improve your personal statement is continuing with any hobbies that you are currently doing it's so important to show your interviewers or people who are reading your personal statement that you're also a well-rounded individual and that you have something that you can de-stress with when you're working as a doctor for example and you have really long working hours and it's actually a question that they sometimes ask in interviews what is something that you can de-stress with or how are you going to deal with the work and life balance how are you going to deal with the stress so having something in your personal statement about a hobby that you really enjoy or a sport that you really enjoy or even kind of a skill that you're focusing on like learning a language or painting or sports etc these are all really good to briefly mention in your personal statement and they will give you plus points <laughs> So, next section is going to be the UCAT. So the UCAT is the entrance exam for most medical schools in the UK and it basically consists of five main sections. First one is verbal reasoning and that one has 44 questions and 21 minutes. Then we have decision making, 29 questions and 31 minutes. Quantitative reasoning, 36 questions and 25 minutes. Abstract reasoning, 50 questions and 12 minutes. And then situational judgment, 66 questions and 26 minutes. So verbal reasoning, decision making, quantitative reasoning and abstract reasoning all contribute to the main score of the UCAT section which is out of 3,600 as a total or 900 each section and then situation judgment is basically scored in bands so you have band one being the highest and band four being the lowest so that's kind of the main overview of the UCAT exam so the UCAT exam is quite notorious for being a difficult hurdle in applications for medicine and basically I'm going to run you through how I revised for it and the best resource that I used which was Medify. So in terms of revision I'd recommend starting early so starting around five to six weeks before your exam day. What I'd recommend doing um, before you start prepping for the UCAT is to watch a lot of videos on how people revise for them and just get a lot of inside information on what are the different study methods that are available for the UCAT and what are the options that you have and just tips from people in general. I think that's really important. I think personally the best way to revise for the UCAT exam is using question banks and websites that help with giving questions and practice papers, etc. So this leads me on to the sponsor of the video, Medify. So I use Medify exclusively for studying for my UCAT. So this is how the Medify page looks. There are many different sections and they have video tutorials if you're still starting, uh, if you still want to understand more information about the UCAT before starting with exam questions and prep questions. Um, so you have different areas to just getting started with the UCAT, what is the UCAT and timing. And then you have UCAT preparation with Medify. So how to best use Medify for the UCAT. Um, um, I think the section is quite important to be honest, gives you just an idea of how to start and just prepares you a bit more. And then you have UCA advice for every single section. So you have verbal reasoning, decision making, quantitative reasoning, um, abstract reasoning and then for the situational judgment test and then you have some tips on the UCAT test day and then how to use UCAT equipment and tools etc and then a bit more of a look into verbal reasoning and then all the different types of questions that could come and so let's look at one of these true false can't tell questions you have a video that really explains the question itself and an overview of how to answer it and then you have worked examples so it's really really helpful in just getting an idea of the different question times and just how to approach them in general and that is for all of the questions as you can see we have decision making, quantitative reasoning, abstract reasoning and situational judgment which is absolutely amazing. Now once you finish these videos it's time for practice basically and that's the main chunk of preparing for the UCA is literally just practice and you keep practicing until you feel like it clicks for you that's generally what I did as well I just kept practicing and doing so many practice questions until I felt like I was slowly starting to just get the groove of how to answer the questions and it started to click for me. 
So as you can see here, you can basically choose a section that you want to do. And then you can also do either untimed questions, so you can choose like 50 questions or a time limit. What I used to like to do is set a time limit exactly the same as the time that you have in the exam. So for example, with verbal reasoning, you have 21 minutes. So I would say time limit is 21 minutes. And it would generally give you around 40, 43 questions. So basically the same number of questions that you would have in the exam. And that would be basically how I would do it in general. And with all the other sections as well, abstract reasoning, I would put 12 minutes. And I would just start with doing the questions. So the practice is really important and then you have an analyze section which basically lets you know how you're doing in general, how is your score doing and then you can explore the topics and you explore the different questions for example like what did you get incorrect and you can just focus on it in general. Another thing you also have is for example you can train with the calculator so you have like a calculator speed test where you can train and then you would also have like a VR interface of training and getting more familiar with how the interface looks. And then finally personally I love the section the most. You have mock tests so you have mock tests you have a diagnostic mock that will just give you an idea of what you need to focus on and then you have a lot of mini mocks for each section which is also really helpful so one of the strategies that medify recommends for ucat preparation in general it's to start with setting a diagnostic mock exam so what that does is just basically stimulates the ucat exam and establishes your ability level and then afterwards you would reflect on your performance and just review it and reflect on why you got certain questions wrong and then you would view tutorials so you do watch the tutorials that medify has available and you'd learn how to address your weaknesses and how to approach certain questions and then after that you do some practice questions and mini mocks and that would basically be for practicing different strategies and experimenting with what works for you after doing practice questions you would go back to doing another mock and you would restart the cycle so basically it's a study cycle Repeating this cycle will enable you to continually improve your performance. And then you have mock tests of the whole UCAT exam. So this is just the whole UCAT exam in one go and you test yourself basically. And as you can see, you have 24 full mock tests for you to do, which is absolutely amazing. And just a perfect way to practice once you feel like you're getting a bit more confident with the like, practice questions on their own. I personally loved Medify and I felt like it was really beneficial and helpful in preparing for the UCAT and I would definitely recommend you guys check it out. I'm going to put the link for the description box below if you'd like to check it out. So that's mainly it for the UCAT section. <laughs> Third and final section, A-levels. So in terms of medical school applications, personal statements, you can, everything are so important, but it's also so, so, so important for you to focus on your A-level and make sure that you're getting good grades. And that's just basically gonna widen the number of universities that you can apply to and will give you a high advantage basically when you're applying to medical schools. So focusing on your A-levels is so important. The first thing you have to focus on is obviously the mock exams in year 12 so that you have good prediction grades that you can apply with. And then obviously the actual A-level exam. Basically a lot of unis, your grades form a percentage of the things that they take into consideration when deciding whether to offer you an offer or not so they're really 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 important guys and I have multiple videos on how to prepare yourself for A-level biology, chemistry, math and then general tips for starting year 12 and just how to prepare yourself how to make your timetable for mocks and A-levels but in general these are the main tips that I think are really important when preparing for your A-levels and mocks. First one is to organize yourself guys organizing yourself is so so so, so important you need to get into the habit of making study timetables and actually sticking to them. They're going to ensure that not only are you covering all the topics, but you're also giving yourself enough time to practice questions, etc. And you're not missing, you're not finding out two days before the exam that you missed a certain topic or you didn't make notes for something. So organizing yourself and making study timetables is so important. I have a video on how to best make study timetables, which I'm going to put up here somewhere here so make sure to check it out and then second most important thing is practice questions same thing with the UCAT practice questions is basically what's going to determine if you're going to get a good grade or not making notes and understanding the information and memorizing it is so important but you also need to understand how the mark scheme wants you to answer a question and what are the certain keywords that if you say are going to get you the mark so this is so important you can only understand this by actually doing practice questions so in all of my videos for A-level biology chemistry and math I have a lot of different websites for practice questions Link in the description box so make sure to check those out and then the final thing is the main the main third thing is to actually use your specification I don't know why I don't know if it was just me or if that's something that people usually do but for me in year 12 I think it was only until midway year 12 that I actually clocked that the specification is helpful 
I don't know why, I was just literally using this textbook and everything and textbooks are amazing etc but there's a lot of waffle that happens in them as well and the specification literally spells out the things that you need to know word by word so it's so important to make sure that you are using the specification and you're basing your studying on the specification and that's just really important in general it will just make sure that you're covering all the topics that are needed and you're not covering anything extra that you don't need basically that's the three main tips for A levels and if you want any more detailed videos as I mentioned I have multiple videos on how to best prepare yourself for A level exams and for different subjects so make sure you check them out that's it guys for how to best prepare yourself for medical school applications I hope you found this video helpful and if you have any other tips or video ideas that you'd like to see make sure to comment them down in the description box thank you so much for watching make sure to like and subscribe and i'll see you later in the next video bye